You saw the title. Yes. It's a new CPU. It's a new Ryzen CPU. It's the Ryzen 7 Pro 4750G. Okay, yeah. <sighs> I drug that out way too long. It was like, is this Zen 3? No, this is not Zen 3. This is, however, an eight core APU. I've been waiting for this for a very, very long time. All right, so full disclosure, this should work on most 500 series motherboards, I think, X570 that have you know video output and B550. But these are only available to OEMs, meaning computer manufacturers. And it kind of makes sense. I mean, this is Zen 2, it's an older technology. Zen 3 is getting ready to launch or has just barely launched, depending on when I get this video out the door. I mean, it's gonna be on Floatplane and Patreon, obviously, but when it goes to YouTube, this is eight cores with onboard Vega, onboard graphics. It's pretty awesome, but do you really need onboard graphics? Well, if you're never gonna have a, a GPU, you're probably only gonna be doing, you know, light gaming, very small gaming. So I reached out to ASRock. As you know, if you've been following this channel for a while, I really like the ASRock desk minis. I've got Intel desk minis, I've got Athlon desk minis, I've got the ancient original desk mini. I love these small form factor computers, not because they're small, but because they're upgradable. You can swap out components. And in fact, this will work with a BIOS upgrade in the desk mini that I already have, but the chipset isn't exactly perfectly correct and it's not really designed for some of the stuff that this CPU does. I mean, to be sure it's eight cores, but it's 65 watts. So ASRock has refreshed that. This is the desk mini X300. Let's open the box and see what we get. All right, so full disclosure, if you're gonna do this, these APUs are expensive to import, expensive relative to what you get. My personal advice would be to wait. Wait on one of two things to happen. One, wait on a local system integrator to get a bunch of these in and build a system for it and then sell it in bulk because when you're buying a tray of these and importing them and doing the assembly, suddenly you've become an OEM of kind of, you know, of sorts, not really, but more or less. So you can buy the Desk Mini X300 ready to go with storage, memory, and a processor. This one doesn't have any of those things, so we're gonna do the build. So in the box, you get the Desk Mini, of course. You get a driver installation CD, which is kind of funny because there's no CD-ROM there. There's not even an option for a CD-ROM. Don't need to include that as rock. It's fine, we can download those. Just put a little card that's like, hey, get these from the internet, and you don't need the CD anymore. This is our 65-watt heat sink. Now, in the last video, I showed you how you could modify the box cooler in order to be able to 65-watt box cooler, which is a little better than this, but you gotta pop the ring off of it to get a clearance. This time, I'm not gonna be doing that because I don't have a box cooler. I mean, I do, but it didn't come with one. Uh, there's an ARGB strip because you can do RGB with those. I mentioned that last time, so it's really awesome to see that in the box. Of course, in the box, you also get the micro SATA cables, two of them. Go ahead and install those even if you're not gonna use them. You get some mounting screws. Go ahead and install all of this stuff. Oh, this is for the Visa mount. So you can also use this with a Visa mount. So if your monitor has a Visa holes on the back and a regular foot, you can actually mount the computer to the Visa stand. Instead of mounting the monitor to a Visa stand, you mount the computer to the Visa stand and then the monitor is freestanding, which is pretty cool. And then of course the power brick, which is actually heavier than the rest of everything else. Now like the predecessor desk mini that this is based on, we've got not the most USB ports. Again, I would still like to see more USB ports. There is the option. You can have two more USB two ports on the side. Two or three, I suppose, depending on the header that you've got. You got one USB 3 port at the back and one USB 2.0 port. That USB 2.0 port is great for a wireless mouse receiver, which is what we're gonna be using. You got a type A and a type C connector on the front, headphone and microphone, separate, you know, three and a half millimeter jacks. The X300M STX. Now, if we look at the motherboard layout here, we can see that the motherboard layout has changed a little bit. One thing that I don't really like is that the M.2 is directly under the USB ports. So depending on what kind of a USB connection that you get for this, if you do use the optional USB header, the optional USB header on the motherboard is USB 2.0. And so if you use the optional USB connection here, you wanna make sure that the cable is not gonna crowd your, your M.2 or break anything off of it. There's also an optional M.2 Wi-Fi module. And uh, of course, you know, cutouts for that on the back, as well as optional RS-232. 
So physically this chassis has room for installation of two three and a half inch drives. Those are notebook drives, you know, they're meant to be SATA, SSDs, or perhaps even mechanical hard drives. And then you've got one M.2 port on the top for, you know, your NVMe type SSDs, and then the M.2 Wi-Fi just below that for a much shorter M.2. The memory for these is notebook memory, this is DDR4. We'll be using G-Skill Ripjaws memory, which is DDR4-3200. At the rear I.O. we actually have three display outs, VGA, HDMI, and display port. That's a pretty good mix. I mean, VGA, you might be thinking VGA, but <laughs> this is meant to be a low cost business computer. This isn't even really for enthusiasts. This is for businesses that are buying a hundred of these to shove under a desk to be forgotten and never thought about again. And uh, VGA, yeah, they're still using VGA in that scenario. I forgot the RGB strip. Well, obviously we have to put the RGB strip down. I mean, come on. <laughs> there goes my USB 2 header. Mm. So I've hidden the RGB strip in this corner where you'll be able to see it from this vent and this vent. So, exciting times. Well, I guess we need the entire rest of the computer. All right, so we get the power brick. Let's see if I can finagle that a little bit here. These, I would recommend that you go ahead and put these inside the computer because if you lose these, it's gonna be bad. And I forgot to do that, but that should be done. Play port, of course. Can't tell you how exciting it is to have eight cores, eight cores and an APU. And now install Linux. Well, I've got this thing put together and I've had a chance to take it for a spin. Yeah, the RGB is pretty neat, but eight cores and 65 watts with Vega? This thing's darn impressive. Really, the only thing I can complain about is for a quiet machine, I mean, it's only got one fan. The fan is a bit loud. I might replace the CPU heatsink with maybe something from Noctua. There's 46 millimeters of clearance for this CPU cooler, so keep that in mind. It is a standard AM4 mounting situation, a retention mechanism, all of that. So any AM4 CPU cooler that'll fit in about 46 millimeters, you can totally install on this. If you've got one of the old school, you know, uh, like the, the Wraith, the smallest Wraith cooler from like the Ryzen 3, that will work in here, but you have to pop the ring off like I did with the previous model. I'm using this fan, it's not bad. I don't find it annoying. I think especially if it were behind the monitor, it would be much less noticeable because it is super quiet. I mean, it's, it's quieter than my air conditioner, but in this configuration where it's sort of facing me, I can kind of hear it and it is not the quietest fan, but still, for the price and what you get for the X300, it's not bad. Now you can order the X300 right now from Newegg and a couple other places, and it's a really good deal for what you get. I mean, surprisingly, in the upgradability and everything else. The worst part is the APU availability. A 4000 series APU or newer is what I would really recommend if you were gonna go this route. I, you know, after messing around with it, the, the Zen 2 APUs and on up are really, I mean, eight cores, eight cores. By contrast, the Ryzen 5 3400G, it's four cores plus Vega. This is eight cores plus Vega. This is a lot better. Eight cores, 16 threads. I've got my Fedora workstation. I'm compiling and running the Pharonix test suite doing some benchmarking. You can check out that benchmark link. It's fast. It's really, really fast for 65 watts. I mean, you can see it turboing up to four gigahertz plus, 4.2, 4.4, and you know, single threaded workloads. But that makes for a fast, snappy, responsive mini workstation. And this will just have to tide me over for a few days until uh, the Ryzen 5000 series launches. Although those are not gonna launch with built-in Vega, so they're not gonna be in this form factor. Now I couldn't help myself, I just had to do a little bit of gaming, a little bit of uh, performance testing. Superposition, 
not great. Even at around 720p, it's about 25 FPS, give or take. I played Borderlands 2, which is available natively for Linux, and it wasn't bad. It was playable at 720p. Although, I must say that I most enjoyed doing the Steam and home streaming from somewhere else, playing a little Borderlands 3, something like that. Very, very fast, very responsive, a surprisingly good experience, no doubt because of the, uh, the oomph of eight cores and the uh, pretty decent integrated Vega graphics. So there you are. It's also worth a quick mention that technically this platform does support error correcting memory, ECC memory. I don't have any ECC notebook dims to test that with, or ECC so dims, so I can't really 100% confirm. But that's what the Pro means in Ryzen Pro. It's like, hey, we can support ECC. But the reality is, it's up to ASRock to properly implement that in a business class machine. Really the only feature missing from a business class machine like this is something like Intel's vPro. Uh, AMD does not have an equivalent feature that's available in this kind of a form factor, although I strongly suspect that they're hard at work on a chipset that is specifically for that management feature because hey, a lot of businesses want to be able to remote into your workstation even when it's off, but not something that rises to the level of a true and expensive IPMI solution. Still, this thing is very impressive, but I get why it's an OEM only product, at least the processor is for right now. And who knows what's on the horizon. All right, let's talk dollars and cents. It cost me $400 to get this CPU here, but the X300 package is super attractive because it's literally everything you need except RAM and some other stuff. By contrast, this system, it's very expensive. It's ITX, you have to get a lot of stuff. There's a, there's a lot of moving parts here. So why isn't this CPU available generally? Well, the Ryzen 5 3400G is only $150 retail, although I've seen it on sale for as little as $110. So consider that $110 Ryzen plus Vega four cores. Is the extra eight cores worth another $300? No, not really. Not unless you've got a specific use case, not unless you're an OEM building machines for rank and file workers, which is really where this fits. If I'm running, uh, you know, Visual Studio Code or something like that, the relatively anemic, but still really good Vega 8 here is good enough for any of those office and productivity tasks. Even a little bit of graphics acceleration for light desktop publishing work, you know, working things like Adobe Acrobat. But I guarantee you this eight core machine with its APU is better than what 75% of rank and file American office workers are using. It is ridiculously powerful. I know a huge company with lots of developer employees their standard issue developer workstation is a Core i3. Now granted, they've got a lot of RAM and a lot of fast storage, but a Core i3 and a developer workstation, I could run four of those virtual machines on this thing, run circles around that, and look at it. It's so tiny and cute, and it's even got RGB. It's kind of disruptive for what it is, but at $400, it's maybe not the ideal price point taken you know, by itself as a CPU. You have to take it into, a larger context, and you better believe that AMD is selling these CPUs to OEMs like Dell and HP and anybody else that's interested at quite a discount, and then they can incorporate them into their designs. But to move a lot of these CPUs, well, it's not going to be the enthusiast market, it's going to be those companies that are buying 10, 100, 1000 of these at once to replace their aging rank and file workstation desktop PCs. And with something like this, you don't have to bother with PCIe slots or anything like that, it really drives the cost down. By contrast, if you pick, say, a 3700X, a 3700X is gonna be a much better choice for your CPU versus the 4750G. It's like, wait, is that, they're, they're both eight cores, I, I don't understand. Well, the 3700X is a little faster. They're neck and neck in some things, but the 3700X is a little faster, and it's $100 cheaper. It's at least $100 cheaper. Yeah, your GPU's gonna cost you something, so it's gonna even out in the end, but $100 cheaper. You can't use a GPU with the X300 from ASRock, obviously. So there are some trade-offs and this platform's really inexpensive, so there are some differences. But, you know, that's really why. An enthusiast that's already DIYing it, they're probably gonna pick a different CPU than this one. So it's kind of a niche use case. I kind of get why AMD hasn't made it generally available except to system manufacturers. It makes sense. So there you have it. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quick look at the ASRock Desk Mini X300 and also the Ryzen 7 4750G. Full Pharonix benchmarks on that. Probably gonna do a follow-up video with a CPU and maybe an ITX or a micro ATX motherboard, a more desktop computer form factor. We can throw a GPU in in that case and, and do some more testing. So if you wanna see anything tested with this or you wanna have any questions answered, let me know. Come to the forums at level one. I'm Wendell, I'm signing up, and I'll see you there.